Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at an example explaining the factors that determine the appropriateness of a design. In the previous video, we looked at the factors that determine the appropriateness of a design. So perhaps you could visit that video before you visit this video because this ex video, I will be choosing an item and using the knowledge that we discussed in the previous video to explain the, the process of the factors that determine the appropriateness of a design, okay? So this is what we'll be doing today, the factors that determine the appropriateness. I mentioned in the previous video that we'll be using a product to explain the factors that determine the appropriateness of a design. So this is the exercise that I'll be doing right now. Now, can you, I want you to, I'm going to show you some items or some photographs. And I want you to guess which one of them you think I'm going to use as an example. Can you guess which one of the following items in the photographs that I'll be using in today's video to explain the factors that determine the appropriateness of a design? Is it a collage of, of five photographs? That was taken in the previous video. So we have the bicycle. We have the space rocket or the spaceship. We have the submarine. We have the train, locomotion train. And we have the butterfly. Can you guess which one, which one of these items I'll be using as an example? Yes, no? All right, let me give you the answer now. The product that I'll be using is a butterfly, right? It's not necessarily a product, but um, we could make a butterfly. If on some tables you would have um, a figurine, we could make a figurine um, butterfly if you think I'm being um, silly. All right? Good. So we are using the butterfly as an example in today's class to explain the appropriateness of a design. All right, so aesthetics. So the butterfly, if you look at the butterfly there, you can see that he has a range of colors. He has brown, black, gray, and um, a little bit of um, pink or purple. Yes, and I guess um, the white part is um, transparent. So he has his, and the wings are symmetrical. Everything about um, the butterfly is symmetrical, so aesthetically pleasing, um, the design of the butterfly is, um, according to nature, A1, all right? All right, functionality. Now, the purpose of the butterfly is to provide pollination so that they can have um, pollination of the different plants or flowers that are that have blooms yes so functionality the butterfly can fly the butterfly can hover the butterfly can land the butterfly can take nectar from the um flower and take it take it to wherever they take the nectar to yes so the butterfly is functional he has his wings and he can maneuver uh, from the different flowers to collect whatever he wants to collect from the flowers, right? And he's lightweight enough. And I think his mouth has a, a straw that can be extended so that he can use his mouth like a straw to extract the nectar or whatever he's taking from the flower to take to wherever he's going to take it. So in terms of functionality, he has his wings, he has his um, legs that he can land on the floor, walk to the one that he wants or she wants and collect the nectar, okay? Our economics. Um, what would be the economics of our um, butterfly? Can you, can you guess? Well, if we're going to make a, a figurine, um, butterfly it would have to be cheap yes 
because um, you would have to make the butterfly out of um, plastic or thin metal. So you'd have to go for a mass market, right? Wouldn't go for a niche market, right? So if we're making the butterfly for a figurine, you know, like sometimes you're making um, flowers and they would stick um, maybe, maybe an artificial stand to hold a card like you're addressing the flower to somebody like two from you would put a plastic thing in there you could put also this metal or plastic um butterfly in the flower flower pot to de to be delivered as a present or a gift right so in terms of economics this would be a mass market product yes if you are in carnival and you're making the butterfly, then the economics of it, um, that would be a niche market. So that would, would come a, you could sell it at a higher price if you're making a carnival costume, right? So you see the difference? That would carnival costume would be the niche market in a carnival. That would be expensive because you would have a high demand. And I guess each person would want to look unique in the carnival, so it would command a higher price. So that is what they were speaking about in the previous video, which explained the 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 topic factors which affect um the appropriateness of the design. Right. Then they spoke about niche market. If it was making a butterfly for the carnival, then that would be a niche market so that product you would sell it at a higher price but if it was making it for a figurine we're just going to put it on the table that would be mass market because um that butterfly stand or that thing made out of metal wouldn't be sold every day right so that would be a mass market you'd have to sell that very cheaply right and produce it very cheaply while the carnival um costume that would take more time and labor and special materials to make it lightweight so the person could walk in the carnival for three hours, right? And the different metal that they would have to use to hold the structure would have to be um, relatively light, yes, so that the person could walk up and down the whole day with the carnival um, costume. Because carnival is a long day event where they would walk on the public street for from starting at a start position to an ending location, right? So that would be the economics of it. But um, in the other examples we'll be using, the real life um, butterfly that we would see flying outside. But for the economics, oh, well, I guess if you're in a museum, not a museum, if you're at a zoo and you have some extinct um, butterfly, yes, then the economics of that, now that butterfly, if there's only one butterfly um, left, out of that species, then that would command a higher price because it's just one you have in the world left. So that one would fetch a higher price, right? So that's what I'm talking about, niche market. So here I was able to bring back to a real life example. So I had used a figurine um, that this, uh, we were making it out of metal or plastic, but I was able to show you in a real life example that you have the same butterfly that is living. Um, it could be in a zoo. And um, if it's an extinct or uh, rare species of um, butterfly, it would command a higher price. So that would be in a niche market, as I explained in the previ previous video, which I made not too long ago, a few seconds ago. Okay? Hope you're following. All right, the environment. Now, the butterfly certainly cannot um, survive in this picture that you're showing with the, with the steam engine there. Yes? No. The butterfly plays an important role in the environment for pollination, right? And I actually saw a video a long time ago. I don't remember if it was online or wherever, but um, in somewhere in those Asian countries, I don't know if it's India or China, I actually saw a gentleman doing pollination manually. So he had a stick, a long stick, and at the end of it, he had a cloth looking thing and what he would do is take it to take the pollen from one plant and instead of the butterfly or the bees carrying it to the other plant because i guess the bees are are rare now he would have to go and do it manually right so the butterfly is in, is important so to use the bees to to enable us to eat um, um food 
that is um, grown from a plant that relies on pollination um, for, the, for the product to be grown. I guess sunflower seeds will be an example, right? So the butterfly plays an important part in the environment. But if you lose the butterfly and the bee, you might have those plants which rely on pollination, meaning the bees and the wind and the butterfly carrying the pollination from one plant to another. Without the butterfly, we will be in a serious problem in terms of food being produced by those plants which rely on the bees and the butterfly and wind for pollination to occur, right? So the butterfly is important um, part in the environment. Now, if we're making a butterfly out of plastic and metal for to sell in a pharmacy, for example, right? So we're selling a, a figurine, right? The environment, um, because we do it mass market and we did it cheaply, I guess it would break it break easily when you buy it and carry it home. So therefore, in the environment, you would have a, a lot of um, broken pieces of um, these butterflies. And if you're going to use the, or the figurine for a one-off use, right? Like the carnival costumes are one-off use, and they're going to use it again because the theme probably change every year in the carnival. Then you now to discard that thing in the in in the carnival. The carnival costume is something which draws attention, you know. So that carnival costume will be big, about two meters wide and about a meter and a half tall, or maybe so it will be big. It's much bigger than the person because you want to it's a costume and you want to draw attention to the to the user that is using the carnival costume in the the carnival. So if the team changes next year to maybe trains and this year was butterfly, I don't think they would store it because it's large and bulky and it's easily broken because he made it lightweight, right? So in the carnival costume, now imagine you have 300 people with this carnival costume. You'd have to discard it, right? So all of that wire and material and cloth and paint that they used to make it, it would have to be discarded because I don't think they, they would um, repeat the theme because I wanted it to be innovative, the carnival to be um, exciting, and they want to take pictures and paste it on their social media pages. So you wouldn't have want the, the persons who are participating in the carnival to, be ha to have the same pictures. It wouldn't be unique. So from that perspective, we were making the costumes with a carnival for carnival and the theme was butterflies or nature. Then you would have 300 um, carnival co um, costume made out of um, a butterfly design. And then it would have to be discarded in the landfill. And because it is big, it cannot easily go into the trash container that is about what, half a meter in diameter the most. So you'd have a lot of um, extra garbage or junk, which cannot be used again. And it cannot be reformed because the parts, the, the, the parts which were used the used to make it, they would have been small relative to relative to the person. So it wouldn't be like a long piece of metal again because I cut it up to make this wireframe. So you would have a lot of um extra garbage. And imagine that you have three hundred of these large things. So it, it would create a lot of um junk which were only used for what? Half of the day or the entire day, it served no purpose after, after that because, as I said, it will be fragile. We have come to the end of the part one of the two-part series of videos on the topic explaining the factors that determine the appropriateness of design. Please join us in the part two of the two-part series video of the same title and um, there are 10 criteria elements that we discussed we have completed four or five in this section so the next section will be continuing thanks for watching the video and don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell like comment and share